What's up everybody, it's Project G here, coming at you with a uh, another episode of uh, Minecraft. This one's going to be a bit different, I'm possibly going to be making this into a series, so consider this uh, episode 1 of Project G's Minecraft Redstone Stories. Um, basically what I'm going to try and do with this is, by the way this is Redstone, um, Redstone Block. Anyway, what I'm going to try and do with this is try and teach you guys how to do some of the cool Redstone circuitry that it seems kind of difficult some of it actually is kind of difficult but anyway um, I'm just gonna jump right in here because I have a little bit of a intense learning curve to get you guys through alright so basically what I'm gonna first I'm gonna introduce you to is some of the limitations this is redstone wire uh, this is redstone dust you, if you have it selected in your hot bar and you right click a tile you'll place it on the ground um, it can go up onto blocks as you can see it climbs that wall however you cannot place it directly onto a wall and you cannot make it go higher than one block at a time as you can see they're not connected by any means All right. so uh, one of the limitations of redstone is that uh, starting from the input which this would be an input this is a redstone torch you craft a redstone torch by using this one stick and one redstone makes one redstone torch unlike a stick and a coal makes four t regular torches redstone torches only come in ones so keep that in mind um, anyway so the redstone torch is considered an input we'll get to those later and starting from the input the redstone dust can go a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I've labeled these 5, 10, 15 blocks before it shuts off. So as you can see, it's, it, you can see by the little sparking and crackling that's coming off of the redstone dust that it's activated. It also has a brighter red color. The darker color means that it's turned off. So at 15 blocks, the, this one is turned off. Now. There is an exception. There is a way to fix this, but I'll get into that later. Now we'll jump into the inputs. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five different types of inputs right now. Um, this one is a lever input. By the way, these are all simple circuits. They're basically input output. You know, so if the input is on, the output is on. Now I've used these doors to uh, give an example. When the door is closed, then the input is off. In this case, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the switch and as you can see this is a lever, lever rather whenever I flip the switch the door opens okay now this one is a wooden pressure plate uh, there is a difference between wooden and stone and I'll get to that in a moment so a wooden pressure plate you walk onto it and the door opens you step off of it and there's a short delay about half a second before the door closes now the difference between stone pressure plates and wooden pressure plates is that wooden pressure plates are able to be weighed down by blocks so if you throw a block you can open the door using a wooden pressure plate now this can be used for some interesting puzzles that you may have seen me do in previous videos if not I will be showing those again later in this series anyway moving on to the button input now the button is a two smooth stone uh, you get smooth stone by smelting cobblestone in furnaces, but you put a sm two smooth stone, one above the other, and you get uh, a button. Press the button, and after a short delay, uh, oh, I'm sorry, press the button and the door opens, and after a short delay, about one second, I would say, the door closes again. Uh, the stone pressure plate, uh, you step on it just like the wooden one, the door opens, however, with the stone, throwing a block onto it will not activate it. So this can also lead to some interesting puzzles uh, for multiplayer scenarios, for example. Now, the last is a redstone torch, and generally you won't have these as inputs very often unless you just need something to always be active. Now, this redstone torch is always on in this case. It's a closed circuit. There's nothing else, just a door and the redstone. Now as you can see, if you close the door, it will not turn off the redstone torch. However, there are other ways of turning off the redstone torch. Alrighty, now moving on, this is our very first 
actual redstone circuit. It's called a knot gate, also known as an inverter. Now these are used in, I suppose, electronics. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're just used in programming. I don't know. Anyway, um, in this case, they're used in Minecraft. So here we go. So as you can see, the input is off. This redstone is not active. However, even though this is off, this door is open. So that's why it's called an inverter. When the input is off, the output is on. And whenever the input is on, the door closes, the output is off. It's very simple to do. I'll show you how to make it later. You might be able to kind of see how it's made. This torch is not a requirement, by the way, just to let you know. You may be able to see how it's made easy. If so, yay. If not, I will still show you how to make it. This is really simple. Anyway, this is the next kind of level up of a circuitry gate. This is an OR gate. And basically what this is, is if any one of these is activated, this door will open. Okay. It doesn't matter how many you activate. It just matters that you activate at least one of them. So one of the inputs is open. The door is open. All of them are open. Door is still open. So you can still close, turn one off and it won't matter. You can use these, for example, if you want to have a door that's almost always open, but you want it to stay open, so you hide separate switches so that you they have to find all three to close it or deactivate whatever it is that you're doing. Um, this is an AND gate. Now this I have also used to make some interesting puzzles. Uh, combine this with the wooden pressure plates and you get something kind of interesting. However, uh, we'll not get into that right now. Basically what an AND gate is, is it requires that both inputs be on for the door to, for the output, I'm sorry, to be on as well. So as you can see, I turn this switch on, however the door isn't open, and I turn the other switch on by itself, the door is still not open. However, if I turn them both on at the same time, the door opens. So this can be used, like I said, as some uh, in for some interesting weight-oriented puzzles. Um, anyway, moving on. So this is the not gate, and this one basically is kind of a uh, a variant of the OR gate, I suppose. Basically, the output. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a little embarrassing. Um, basically, what it is is it's kind of like an inverted version of the OR gate, where the output is always on. However, if you activate one of the inputs, then the output turns off. You can use this, um, say for instance you have a door that you want to close, but you want to be able to close it from multiple areas. This is a good example of kind of the, the same thing. Now the problem is, is that once you close it in one of the areas, it doesn't matter what you do, it will stay closed until you open it back up. All right. Now those are the uh, four simple gates. Now we move on to one of the more complicated ones. And even I get kind of confused with these, so bear with me if I kind of screw this up. This is called an XOR gate. And what it is is basically when the inputs are equal to each other, the door, the output is off. However, whenever one of them is on and one of them is off, like so, the door is open. The output is active. It's on. So, it's, if they're both even, then the output is off. If one of them is active and one of them is not active, then the output is active. However, what you can do is, if you Bear with me just a second. I haven't done this before. Thank you, door, for taking way too long. If, for example, you attach an inverter to this, then if both... I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me toggle this real quick. Okay. If you attach an inverter to the output, when both are even, the door is open. However, if one of them is off, then the door is closed. Now, for that, this is kind of pointless because you can just substitute a different gate for it, but, you know, there are, it does have its uses. There's always something that you can do, you know, otherwise 
there would actually be no point to it in the first place. Anyway, um, so that is the basis of, or the basics, I should say. Uh, this one's a little more advanced. This is the one of the more simple advanced ones, if you can believe it. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to show you, I have a little bit more time left, I have about three and a half minutes, so I think I'm going to show you how to make um, some of these gates. Now they're really simple, I'm just going to move over here. For an inverter, it requires you to have an input, so I'm going to use this lever as an input. Okay, so you have your little redstone wire, and then it requires what I would call a buffer, but it's probably not really anything like that. And so that's going to be the block. And then I'm going to put a redstone torch against the block and an output. So that's basically the inverter. It's really simple. If you turn the input on, the output is off. Um, by the way, that just reminded me. Going back to this, <laughs> I'm sorry, going back to the very basics, um, this input only travels 15 blocks. However, as you can see, the input behind it Tra oh, I'm sorry, that was lag. The input behind it travels all the way. This is 20 blocks. I haven't had it. I didn't, didn't get it marked, but this is 20 blocks, and it'll travel far f farther uh, before. The reason for that is that I have two inverters, one right after the other. It's a double inverter, also known as a transformer, and those are actually used in real life. Transformers are used to step up voltage to make electricity be able to travel farther. So isn't that cool? Um, Anyway, getting back to this, this is a simple inverter. Uh, I believe, no, uh, might be wrong, but if you do something like this, it doesn't work, see? Okay, so I fail miserably, but whatever. Anyway, so again, you have your input, you have your buffer, you have your redstone torch, and you have your output. So there you go, that's that. Um, for the next one, which is the, was that, the OR gate, we have our inputs, three, one, two, three, okay, well, that one's weird, do want to be different, and then we have our buffer, which is going to be right here, what we're going to do is we're going to attach all three of these inputs to this first part of the, this first block, this first buffer, and then we're going to attach a redstone torch to the top, one redstone torch here, and then a redstone torch right there. Now this is basically an inverter. This block and that redstone torch is in and of itself an inverter. However, what that does is it allows the input, the output to be on whenever one of the inputs is off, like before. Uh, I'm sorry, on. The input is on. Um, anyway, so those are two. I think I'm running out of time here. I am. I have a minute left. Um, But anyway, so that's the basis of uh, simple redstone circuits. Um, by the way, this is my lab. It's all the way down at the bottom of the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, so I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this, and I hope you will continue to learn from uh, this series of redstone stories. I guess that's what I'm going to be calling it. Um, and I hope you enjoy, like I said before, I'm pretty sure. And I will see you guys in the next episode, video, installment, whatever you want to call it, alright? Alright, see you guys later.